Hey, what's up? This is Don for Video Fort, and uh, welcome to another Cinema 4D and After Effects tutorial. And uh, this time we're going to be taking a look at how to create this uh, spot island which you're looking at right now. Um, and uh, we're going to split this into three separate parts. Uh, part one, which uh, this video is, is uh, just going to be looking at setting up the the hardest bits so the animation particularly the text reveal effect uh, we want to be building the setup for that and then in the other parts uh, part two and three we will look at setting up the rendering lighting uh, texturing you know and then uh, also some uh, compositing uh, in uh, in after effects so uh, that's a quick breakdown of what this uh, series is going to be about um, and like i said in this video we'll just uh, do the setup for the animation okay so let's uh, jump into cinema 4d uh, and all i have here is the video for logo um, you know in this uh, spline and this is going to be our starting point so um let me just uh, zero out the position for this, um, but I will leave it at uh, 35 y, uh, y position. Okay, so I want to throw this into an extrude, first of all. And I'm going to go to the Caps tab here, which I'm already on for some reason. And I'm going to set the start and the end to be none, so we can see through it basically like that and then I want to get a plane and let's set the orientation of this to be Z plus so that it's uh, upright and um, I want to go to display and then change the mode to grow shading with lines so I can see where the segments are and uh, this plane which uh, I just put into the scene, this is what's going to be, uh, when we break this up later, this is what makes those uh, particles you saw uh, revealing the logo. So you want to go ahead and place this um, just as a bounding box for the text. So it needs to be large enough to contain all of the text but uh, also don't have any too much overhang uh, in any of the directions. So I'm left with uh, something like this. And then if you look at this, the segments on here, this is what uh, determines the shape of the particles. So if we were to go with this, as it is right now, we would just have these long rectangles uh, instead of you know these uh, cubes that we have in the example so um, I know that for this example the height needs to be 10 and the width needs to be 70 segments and uh, I just know that because that's the number I used when I was doing the, uh, the setup for the preview I'm just making sure this is not larger than it needs to be Okay, so um, with the plane intersecting uh, with the text, so let's uh, move it further so it's in the middle like this. I want to go to the array icon here and then get the bull tool. And then I just want to drag both of these in here. And this is just going to morph into one uh, flat plane. But if you look on the surface of this, you can see the outline where the text is uh, cutting through all of this. It looks a bit too messy though. Um, you can clearly see there's a lot of segments here which we don't want. This would just be a load of uh, triangles. Um, and it's happening where, you know, there's a curvature uh, in the letters. The straight bits are fine. So to remove that, I want to go to bool and then make sure that uh, hide new edges is ticked and that's going to uh, clean that up and then I want to go to the boolean type and let's set this to A intersect B 
uh, everything was going to disappear. That's because we'll need to just go back to this and just uh, close the sap. So let's put a cap on the front and a cap on the back. So if I were to drag this out of the hierarchy, it just looks normal. Again, I just opened it up so you could see how it was uh, intersecting with the text. But um, when we close it up again, now you can see um, that uh, the text is made up of uh, these segments. And if I go to the plane here, I can play around with the number to get something different. So maybe this could be half. So half of 70 is 35 and the same for the height. And I would just end up with larger blocks. So that's how you control the size of the particles you want to use. Okay, I think I will stick with uh, 70 though, just because I want to create exactly what you saw in the, in the example. And we need to make this uh, whole thing editable so that we can do the, um, the particle reveal animation. So if I right click the blue tool, I just want to click current state to object. And this will create an editable version of this whole setup we've just uh, created. I'm going to select all of this though, right click and group objects. So I'll throw it into a null and then switch this off um, just to save this backup in case we need to go back some steps uh, later on. But um, when we created the editable versions here, uh, it gives you uh, a lot of pieces which are redundant. They're not actually anything in the scene. So I want to delete this extrude. The only thing we need is the plane. So let me move that out of here. And this is what's uh, making up our text. Okay, so we want to break this apart. And uh, let me just zero out the Z position and the X position also. And uh, to break this apart, we are going to use uh, poly FX. So this can be found under the more graph menu and uh, poly FX. And this needs to be a child of the plane object in order to work. Let me just uh, rename this logo. And just to show you this is working, I'm going to go here, go to more graph and get a random effector. And uh, this will just break up the whole logo uh, using the default uh, values. If I go to the Effector tab, I want to play with the strength here just to show you what's happening. The logo is basically breaking apart along those um, seams uh, or segment lines that we set um, earlier in the, in the tutorial. So that's how you get those particles to fly around. Okay, um, we don't need a random effector just yet. We want to uh, build the reveal effect uh, before we do that. So the way to do this is again uh, make sure you have the poly effects selected and then go to more graph effector and then plane. And uh, this will move everything up by uh, default. So just go to the parameter tab and uh, switch off position. What we do want though is the scale and we need to affect all the three scales equally. So if I go to uniform scale, tick that, I want to go to scale and set this to minus one, which will make everything disappear because the, the plane effector as it is right now doesn't have any fall off. So it has 100% influence across the entire logo. So we have to change that. If we go to the fall off tab, I want to go to the shape and uh, change it from infinite to sphere. And now only the area inside of the fall off, uh, which is indicated by um, uh, this, uh, this, you know, red and yellow circles uh, or spheres rather, um, only those areas will be affected now. And uh, I will drop the fall off though to 
30%. And that the fall off is basically the distance between the edge of the um, uh, red bounding sphere to the edge of the yellow bounding sphere. And the fall off is interpolated between that uh, distance. So the areas closest to the red, uh, you know, they'll be acted upon by the effector with 100% influence and then the areas further away will be um, there'll be less influence on those and that's why you have this uh, gradual decay of the effector. Uh, of course this is uh, actually inverted right now so um, the opposite is usually true where the areas closer to the red are more affected but uh, you get what I mean. So if I invert this back I want to animate the scale of this starting at 0 on uh, frame 0 go to frame 90 and then animate this value until it is large enough to contain all of the text so around 130 percent seems to be the right number oops uh, it keeps snapping back for some reason Okay, I have to keyframe this before I move anything, and then that's now saved. So if I play this back, this is what we have. And uh, that's the first step to building the reveal effect, uh, but there's, uh, there's more to it. Let's um, go to the poly effects again, and uh, we want to add a second effector, and this is going to be that random effector. And uh, we just want to use this to create um, some variation uh, to the, you know, sort of the position of the particles as they're flying toward forming the logo. So you kind of want them to start out here and then sort of move into the logo uh, before going to the final resting uh, positions. So obviously this is a uh, too extreme, um, but of course we haven't made any changes yet. Let's uh, first of all bring this under the logo as well and zero out uh, the position. Go to the fall off tab and give it the same fall off as the plane effector we used at the beginning. So this will be a sphere. The fall off will be 30%. And uh, I want to animate the scale the same. So starting at zero. Let's uh, set a keyframe, go all the way to the end here, and then set this to 130 also, and then set that keyframe. So now when I hit play, this tool will animate at exactly the same rate. So it may appear that there's only one here, uh, but they are just uh, perfectly aligned. Um, but also, the we need to reverse this. So if I go to invert, that's going to reverse that um, so its fall off is the same as the effector underneath and now we'll have the particles sort of starting uh, on an offset and then sort of come back into the logo but uh, this number is uh, too high uh, they're flying in way too quickly and uh, from too far away so I want to go to the random effector and uh, under parameter this needs to be lower so I think 10 was the value that I used in the example um, on all three sides here. And when I do that, now we have something which looks closer to what we wanted. Okay, um, the only thing left here now is to just finesse how that looks. Um, it comes in a little bit too quickly. And uh, also, I wanted to ease more at the end there. Uh, there's two ways to do this. You could go to the timeline and, uh, you know, play with the handles on the keyframes here. Uh, so you could grab this handle and increase the, the fade-in time, um, you know, to create that kind of uh, S-curve uh, like this and do the same for the end. And uh, that could work also. But um, this is the long way of doing it. Uh, it's much easier to just uh, convert these keyframes to linear, first of all. So if you select everything and just tick the linear, 
and then do the ease effects using uh, a different type of um, effector. And let me show you what that is. If I click on the poly effects, I need to go to more graph effector and I want to get the delay effector. I think I have covered this uh, in tutorials by itself, just uh, this effector, um, but you can learn about it here too. Um, and if I play this through now, you can kind of see an ease effect going on at the beginning and at the end, but this is too similar to what we had with the keyframes. Uh, anyway, not much difference, but if I go to the um, Effector tab, uh, the mode is set to blend, which is uh, correct. Um, the strength is uh, only at 50 though. Let me put this up to 80. And when I do that, you're going to see the ease effect is going to be stronger. So the way the particles come into the scene uh, is more gradual and uh, smoother. Uh, and the same goes for how they come to a rest at the end of the animation. I need to extend my uh, timeline here. Let me have 8 seconds, just so you can see this animation completed. And uh, that's what it looks like. Okay, so um, that's the bulk of the um, animation. If you look back to the example again, the only thing missing here is this uh, sort of twisting uh, motion. I uh, will get to that shortly, but uh, first of all we need to add some uh, volume to um, to these particles. But right now they're just this flat um, pieces of uh, geometry. We need to give them some depth um, just to make them look blocky. So I'm gonna click on the logo here and let me make the delay effect a part of that same um, hierarchy. Uh, but with the logo selected, I wanna go to uh, simulate cloth and get the cloth surface. And if I make the logo a child of the cloth, um, go to the cloth settings here and subdivisions, and this needs to be set back down to zero. Um, but now I can use this uh, thickness control to give these things some um, some depth and that's how you do the extrusion of uh, the flat pieces. Um, and uh, I think two centimeters does give me this, uh, these nice blocks. So I have something like that. Um, in the example, we had uh, actually two layers to the logo, so you can clearly see there's a split down the middle. Um, and uh, this was also simple. I just uh, got the whole thing, uh, dropped it into a cloner, um, set the mode to linear still, but the count was only set to 2, and the movement uh, on Y to 0, and then just put 2 movement into Z space and uh, that gave me this. So now if I uh, uh, play this back, um, I don't know why it uh, doesn't seem to be working. It seems the particles are already there at the beginning uh, for some reason. The only difference I can uh, pick up from uh, from this to the example project was that the effectors were not uh, a child of the cloner. So let me pull this out of here and see if that makes uh, any difference. And uh, it does. So I guess the cloner uh, was also cloning the effectors and uh, that must have had some uh, strange results. So just uh, pull those out and uh, everything should work uh, as you were expecting. So let me uh, play through this. The one thing I did miss out um, in the random effector here was uh, some rotation. So let's uh, activate that too. And then just dial in some uh, random numbers here. And I want to play this back. There's going to be some uh, rotation uh, on all the, the pieces. 
and there we have it okay so now that we have uh, that figured out um, we want to do the twisting animation so if I go to the deformers there's a deformer just for that and it's called twist um, for this to work everything needs to be in a null object together so let me get a null let's call this parent um, or logo parent and get the cloner and uh, the twist and uh, throw this in here and uh, now whatever I do to this will have an effect uh, to the objects underneath it okay um, this needs to be let's see so we're going to be twisting it this way um, so this needs to be rotated like this so when I do the twisting it uh, twists the logo the right way and uh, then I just need to size this uh, bounding box to be just a little bit larger than our logo and uh, I need to position this better and uh, take down the height Okay, that's a uh, reasonably sized. And now, as well as the, uh, the, the particle being revealed, we can add some uh, twisting motion to this. So I'm just going to set this to 180 for one sort of one half twist. It's not a full twist, but uh, that's all we need. And I can keyframe this, go to three seconds and zero this out and then keyframe again. And uh, when I hit play, it's going to look like this. I think I want the, um, the twist to finish before the particles, uh, you know, come to a stop. So let me make this shorter by maybe 10 frames. And then I could also go to the timeline here and uh, play around with the curves. So if I just reset this and then maybe have an ease uh, ease in. This last keyframe needs to ease in and I can play with this some more. So it's going to be quite fast and then really really slow down to a stop. So let's uh, play that and uh, there you go. That looks much much uh, better. And that's it. Um, that's how you set up the animation for the the logo reveal and uh, that's going to be the hardest part of this entire uh, tutorial series. So the hard work is out of the way. Um, I'm going to finish this recording and then we'll continue uh, in part two when we build the rest of the scene. Thanks for watching.